If you're looking for a hardy evergreen tree that's perfect for hedging or as a feature point in your garden, look no further than the bay tree. It's native to the Mediterranean region with a rich culinary medicinal history due to its beautiful herbal scented dark green leaves. Most of the time in home gardens, you'll see these taller than 10 feet, but they're completely customizable with regular trimming. If potted, they won't grow more than three meters. The glossy leaves are what this tree is known for, but throughout the seasons, it will produce yellow flowers and small black oval fruit beside the leaves. There are a few varieties of bay trees. Bay trees have a variety of benefits for you and your home, depending on how they're utilised. They are mostly used as an edible topiary for borders, hedges or features in gardens as they grow tall but are easily clipped into shape. The leaves fragrance can also be used as a deterrent for furry fence visitors like mice and possums. The bay tree can also work nicely as indoor kitchen greenery in a vase or even serve as a problem solver in a spot outside with difficult soil. The bay leaf is also a very popular spice in Mediterranean dishes like soups and stews. The aromatic leaves can be harvested at any time and used dry or fresh depending on the recipes you're following. Additionally, this leaf has been used as a key medicinal ingredient for digestive and antiseptic relief for centuries. Whether it's a useful hedge, a focal point or potted greenery indoors, it's now time for you to choose where it best fits. Bay trees are extremely versatile, but they're best suited to full sun or part shade where the plant crown is at soil level. If they have good drainage, these incredible plants are also frost, drought, coast and salt tolerant once established. These plants can prosper in most soils, but the best results will come from a well-drained soil like this, as it will prevent help root rot. Good practice would be to dig through some well-broken down compost just before planting. And if it's going into clay soil, like this, try adding some gypsum to help break down the soil and assist root growth. Once you've picked your preferred location for planting, let the fun begin and get it in the ground. Now it's not common for this species to be grown from seed, but if you're willing to take on the challenge, there are a few key pointers. If you're using seeds from your mature trees, remember bay trees are dioecious, so you need to have a male plant and a female plant for successful fertilisation. This one here, you can tell, is a male plant based off the sacs on the branches. To grow from seed, look for the small fruits that have turned dark purple or black in late summer. Pluck them off and pry open the dark matte covering off the seed. Plant these immediately into a seed tray and seed mix like this one here. But be aware that it can take anywhere from 10 days all the way up to six months for your plants to germinate. The best results overplant, so plant heaps to make up for the lower germination rate. If you'd like to grow these trees from propagation, use semi hardwood cuttings at the end of summer. These will be long and leafy and ideally have a heel of older bark at the base. Remove the lower leaves and dip the end in striking gel and gently place it into a pot of propagating mix. Keep the cuttings moist and warm in the sun until they're established. Then, once they've got a good root system, plant them into some well-draining soil outside. If buying the plant, it can be put in the ground at any time of year, but for best results, autumn is your best bet. Pick a spot where it gets plenty of sun, water, but still good drainage. And then before you plant, apply some fertiliser into the soil and water that in well. Planting in off-season and planting on-season are two very different things, especially when it comes to fertilisers. For example, bay trees in-season, planting is in autumn. 
If you're planting in season, you will use a liquid fertiliser. That's because the plant itself is getting ready to put out all that new growth and all those new roots. So it needs the fertiliser and the food to be instantaneously available. If you're planting it off season, so for bay trees, for example, it would be spring. Use a slow release fertiliser. These are granulated fertilisers. So while the tree is dormant, this will slowly break down into the soil ready for the roots to come out. So find out when their growing season is and that'll give you the solution as to if you should be putting liquid fertiliser or slow releasing. If you're wanting to plant your bay tree into a pot, choose a pot that's at least 300 mil wide and 300 mil deep. That can be watered and positioned in full sun or light shade. Place some potting mix in the bottom, remove your plant from its basic pot, tease out the roots a little, pop it in, top it up and firm it down. Now this plant's actually not too bad, but sometimes you'll get plants from nurseries that are a little bit pop bound. So basically you can see all the roots around this side and it might be really, really hard to get out. If your plant is root bound, what I would suggest is once you've removed it out of this pot, soak it into a bucket of water with maybe some liquid fertiliser in it for a couple of hours. What that does is it gives the plant a really good drink and it helps loosen the soil around the roots. So you don't have to get your fingers in and tease it all up to get it out. So you won't damage it. Like I said though, this plant's actually quite good. So all we need is just a little really light play on the bottom just to release those horizontal roots. But don't be too aggressive about it. All right, so it's just teased out a little bit. Pop it in. So the collar of the plant, which is generally where the first branches come from, you don't want that covered in soil. So we're gonna pop it about there and then we're gonna backfill it. So once that's done, give it a drink of liquid fertilizer and then pop it into place. With your bay trees planted and taking shape, it's time to start making sure they're being taken care of. The first thing to look out for is for any pests or diseases that they may encounter. Scale insects are the most common pest for a bay tree. They can appear on the leaves or on the stem, but are easily controlled with insecticides suitable for food plants. Keeping on top of them requires closely monitoring the tree. Take action when required, as these insects are known to come back again, so multiple treatments will be required. Aphids and mites can also appear in a bay leaf but a spray of white oil or neem oil like this will keep the sap sucking insects away. Commonly you'll find aphids and mites in the interceptions of leaves, so between the branches and the leaf or between the branches and the main stem. They're flying insects, so if you hose your plant and then you get this big fly, that's them. Generally the mites will be on the backs of the leaves and you may see like a little cobweb sort of formation on the back, that's where your red spider might be. However, both of these insects may bring along sooty mould, like what we've got here in this leaf as it grows in the excrement of the scales in the form of black powdery fungus. Taking control of this requires managing the insects and in time the mould will flake off. If it bothers you, this also comes up pretty quickly with a hose or brush or a sponge in this case. Finally, bay trees are also prone to sending up new shoots in their roots called suckets. To avoid these, refrain from digging the soil from the base of the tree as this will damage the roots and will trigger the suckers to shoot. If suckers are left to grow, they'll create a dense shrub-like plant. So if you want to keep your bays a single trunk, these will need to be controlled. It's best to attack them when they're small. Thoroughly spray the sucker stem with an organic weed killer to effectively kill it without harming the main tree. Alternately, suckers can be cut or pulled off the main root, but you need to make sure you keep an eye on that area just in case the little sucker reshoots. With pests, diseases and suckers in check, you can focus on keeping your plant thriving throughout the seasons. Despite this tree being self-sufficient, if you're worried about the soil quality at all, or you want to really optimise your growth, you can give it a controlled release fertiliser. Another bonus would be spreading some mulch around the base of the tree, but make sure you keep it away from the trunk. In summer, you can increase the uptake of water slightly as the sun exposure increases. After the first year, your plant will have developed a drought tolerance, so after that you can lower the intake yearly. Keep in mind though, bay trees don't like wet feet, and they do have shallow roots, so don't overwater it. You can use a water meter like this to determine the best time to water. Summer's also a great time to be shaping a tree if it needs it. If it's getting too tall, cut off any of those main leaders that shoot up through the top of the plant. 
If you're growing it in a pot, consider repotting it every three to four years to reinvigorate the soil. Just be careful if it's in a pot, the root system can be damaged when doing this. There's really no need to worry about this super hardy plant. Through autumn and winter, it will still manage with the cold and the change conditions, although it will benefit from a liquid fertiliser. Autumn and winter is a great time to cut your tree back into the shape you're after, and pruning regularly encourages bushiness of the plant and the lush foliage. It's best to wait two years before harvesting any leaves from the tree. Once your green leaves have grown to a healthy size, like these ones here, harvesting is easy as picking the leaves off the branch and washing them really well before you dry them. To dry them, lay them out on a piece of baking paper in a warm, dry room for around two weeks. Then once they're dry, store them in an airtight container for later use. Well there you have it, there's a use and look for every garden, so head down to your local Bunnings for these amazing trees.